I know we will get through this. I know at the end of the day, we will find to do what is right, and I want to make that day starting right now. I think the actions the President took was correct, and I think when you talk to the governors out across this nation, they are showing it's working well with this administration. We need to do the very same right here in the House. Yes? Uh, it sounds like the concerns you're expressing about the bill aren't deal breakers. They are things that can be addressed. The question is, can they be addressed before Congress goes away for a week and change recess? How important is it to get this bill passed before you go away for recess, knowing that if this virus spreads, you might not come back? I think it's more important that we get it right. Um, I'm not concerned that we go on recess. I think we stay here. We get it right. This is a time and place that you do not want to rush something. I mean, it's not just my words. If you talk to Democrats on the Rules Committee themselves, Earl Perlmutter, you know, this has jurisdictions of many committees. No one got to see it. It's there at 11 o'clock last night. Just as your question raises, I think it's more important we take a moment to step back. Let's work together. There are bright minds. We should be listening to those in the industry. We've got some bright minds down at the administration, here on our committees as well. Let them look at it. Let us get together and put the very best ideas together. And I will promise you that you'll find a very bipartisan vote for that and not one that slows it up by any means. And I think we can get this done in the next 48 hours. So you think the House should stay here until you get it done? I think we can get this done in 24 or 48 hours, yes. I think it's critical that we do. What was the concern here besides, okay, obviously there was concern on your the side of the aisle about the, the contact of the bill. You talked about some of the elements in it. But seeing what's going on on Wall Street, remembering the TARP experience in 2008, putting a bill on the floor that they probably could have passed with Democratic votes but didn't have support of the administration and many Republicans, the idea of, of sending kind of a message of confidence, is that part of the calculus here besides the policy elements or was it looking at, at what's going on on Wall Street right now and, and being concerned that there's a bill out there that doesn't see the light of day in the Senate or won't get signed by the president. This is so different of an economy than it was in TARP. TARP was an economic meltdown. We have one of the strongest economies we've ever had in the last 50 years. That's at a positive place. We have the lowest unemployment. So what you really should be looking at, how do we make sure these people stay employed? Before, you're just trying to get money into people's hand to get a consumption going. This is a stronger position to be in. So one, you want to, treat, you want to treat this virus, but more importantly, you want to keep the economics going strong in the same basis. That's why we're in a stronger position to get this right and sit together and not play any political games. And to clarify things, are the asks by Republicans beyond what you just mentioned there? Are we talking about, are you going to ask for the payroll tax holiday that the president mentioned last night in this push for? Are there other economic elements of this beyond the two things you mentioned? I believe if there are big things that will take more time, let's do what we can do together right now. We can work on those bigger things and come back in the next couple weeks. But I do believe it is critical that we get a small portion of this done right now. I think it, it helps give confidence. But remember, we are elected policymakers and leaders. This is our moment in time to show that we will rise to the occasion just as every other American believes we should do. Do you, you're hearing from your members frustration that there are no testing kits? I mean, Congress doesn't have any testing kits. What's going on in this? Do you have any left? There, there, there are, are testing kits out there. There are people who have been tested. Congress doesn't get in any forward in the front of the line as we talked to the doctor today. I was just talking to um, one American company out there that is just on the verge of being able to have the test ready in the next short time. They're making sure that it's done correctly that you could have a test back in eight minutes. So, I mean, this is the ingenuity of this country. It's not just government's going to be able to solve it. We have such bright minds in the private sector as well. We want to harness that. We want to create the synergy. And that's what's going to get us to the point where we're going to have a vaccine for this. Just as Ebola, which was much more deadly, we were able to contain that back into Africa. We now have a vaccine for it and others. Unfortunately, when you look to Italy and to these other countries, they did not have the leadership that took the action that this president took by stopping the planes from China coming here. Yes. Uh, how, what have you suggested to your members, and how is it, has it changed the uh, campaign strategy in terms of uh, you know, large gatherings and uh, whatnot? Has it hampered uh, your members in any way as far as campaign events? Well, the first thing I would say is, this is not a time to be sitting thinking about campaign events. This is a time 
that this crisis is about America, and this is what we should focus on. Uh, put campaigns all aside. This is not, there's time and place for that later. Let's solve this problem. You're elected to be a policymaker, and let's work through that. I just got off the phone with our members on a conference call. We had Dr. Monaghan on it. We had um, Rodney Davis from the House Administration. We had La Larry Kudlow. We're answering numerous questions. But the one thing I wanted to take away from all of our members, that we will work with the Speaker, we'll work with the administration, and we will make sure that we get this bill right. Yeah, but yes. Did that, that was a conference call? Yeah. Why didn't you do uh, a conference meeting? Well, the reason why I did a conference call because we had a number of things change, and this is not our normal um, time for a conference we had on another day. I thought the participation would be bigger. I also would have other people that I wanted to participate on because they were someplace else they, instead of traveling into the Capitol. That wasn't helpful. It wasn't but it's a combination. No, I thought the participation would be better. It's also from a standpoint. It does also help with health that you don't have as big as group together, but from participation, it allowed everybody to be there. <laughs> yes. Can you explain a little bit more of these tax credits and other things that you're proposing to be added to the bill? You mentioned them very briefly, and I just wanted to get a little more detail on that. And also, there is a big expansion of Medicaid in the bill. Does Republicans uh, have any problem with that? Uh, well, the one thing I would sit back and look, and you're talking about the F map and the expansions there. Um, there is no scoring. There's no committee looking at that. And these are such big items. I just do not believe it would be smart on our part to rush that through, that you got it at 11 p.m. last night, you're voting on it <coughs> at 11 a.m. <coughs> this morning, um, without any score, without any work through, where's the sunsets and others. I'd rather have the minds and the expertise that we have on both sides of the aisle here, especially with the number of committees that have worked on this, to be able to see that and at least have input. Yes. One of the items that we're hearing from our viewers is there they go to the market. There's nothing there. They're they're going to their prescription pharmacies and they're starting to run low on certain drugs. What what can Congress do about that? Well, there's another thing Congress have already done, and this is the one thing I want to make sure the American public knows. Just in the last five years, we have increased funding almost of 40 percent when it comes to the National Institute of Health and the Centers for Disease and Control, CDC and NIH. Those are the individuals who are actually helping lead in this process. So you had a 40% increase. Just in 2019, under this administration in our majority, we created the Infectious Disease Rapid Response Fund. So they could actually go after dealing with this at the very beginning. And then we had the national stockpile. So we have been preparing for a situation such as itself. Unfortunately, that when this first came to the fruition that um, President Xi did not allow us in there. If our scientists, our doctors were able to be in China from the very beginning, we'd have more knowledge, and we would have probably really helped save the world that with the containment could have been just within their country. Right now, it's a different situation. So we will do everything on our part, working with the private sector, making sure that we have the facilities that we need. The other thing, too, is from a responsibility from all Americans, not to panic, but don't hoard it as well. Let's make it sure those who need it, just like when it comes to a mask situation, you watch the run on masks. Here we have 3M that builds two different masks. One's an industrial and one's a surgical. The industrial one can work for medical providers. But because of our own regulations, they would be sued if they sold it to them. But those are millions of masks. We can simply change that provision, and that's one of the provisions we're looking at, and those would be millions of more masks today to be able to go forward to be sold. Yes. To follow up on those masks, though, um, we were told that they're for people who are sick, so they stop spreading the diseases. Why do millions of masks need to go to healthcare providers? Uh, I assume to. Keep well, it's a combination of both. I mean, if you if if you are a medical provider on the front line that is dealing with somebody that is sick, right there in testing, you need a mask on as long with the person who is sick. That's why you want to make sure too that you have both. One yes. last question. Do you, you expect a disaster declaration today? Kudlow told you guys on the call. Is that something you're supportive of and, and everything like that? Look, I, I think the actions this administration has taken, I know some people criticized this president early for taking the action of not having China come for, forward. He did talk about other items that he will take. I think those are appropriate, smart, and helping to keep this country safe. You anticipate that today, though? Um, I'd leave that up to the administration when they go. Yes, ma'am. Capital tours are already canceled. What is the likelihood that Congress extend this week on recess next week? You know, we, we monitor this day by day. I think from one situation, 
that's exactly how we should approach it. We want to make sure the policy makers are here to take what action is needed. We need to lead in this situation. We need to work together. And remember, we have overcome so much in this country. But more importantly, this country has, has led in overcoming any of the problems around the world. And we will do the same with this. This is not a time to panic by any means. I'm looking what's happening in the private sector and in with government. At the end of the day, we will get a vaccine. We're testing right now for the best treatments and therapies. We are taking the actions and the precautions ahead of time to make sure this does not spread as rapidly as we've watched in Italy and others. And whatever we see in front of us, we will overcome and we will solve it. Can Thank I you very much. Did you, did you have members of the administration from the economic, not the health side, but so much to talk to the members this morning about saying, okay, this is what we need for, uh, to pass this bill from the administration? Because obviously they had concerns. They said they didn't like it in its current form. What did the administration, or have you spoken with the administration? What did they tell Look, you? Look, we, we have been talking to the administration throughout with Secretary Mnuchin, with Larry Kudlow. We, we had Larry Kudlow scheduled to come on a whole different topic earlier from today and we modified what the conference was about today but Larry Kudlow talked about the current measurements within the economy how strong we are um, prior to this virus our economy was even growing bigger and we want to make sure we have that remember this is so different than the economic meltdown we're walking into a virus when we're economically strong so how do we make sure we take the treatment we prevent it and keep the economy growing. And that is, our, that is our goal, that is our mission, and that is what we'll achieve. Thank you very much. With that, please to take any questions. Let me see, who, who, okay, you. <laughs> the European statement, it sounded like you're open still to changing this bill or at least tweaking it for some of the Republican yes. White House concerns. When you guys vote this afternoon, are you planning to release your members to go home? Or will you keep Congress in session until there's a pres uh, bill on the president's desk? Well, we have a, <clears throat> our, whether we go home or not is more related to the, um, what the health physician, the capital physician says and what the, uh, the um, sergeant at arms and the police chief and the rest say about what could come next that we have to deal with because uh, they make statements every day based on the current state of affairs in the community in which we exist here in Washington, D.C. So uh, I do think that uh, some of the suggestions, what happened, it moved quickly because who knew, right, that we would be in this situation. We passed the bill last week, immediately we knew we had to do more and we had to put, get it onto paper and we, when we had it and we shared it, with the Republicans, they made some uh, changes to it. We we're negotiating uh, with um, Secretary Mnuchin. He had some suggestions, all very reasonable. I think that none of them is a, uh, would prevent us from moving forward with the bill. We just have to, though, in the world that we live in, have language so that we can go to rules, so that we can go to the floor. Uh, I don't think we would wait until there's a signed bill. We, we'll, we will do our work, uh, as I said sensitive to changes that have been suggested. Uh, I don't think they're unreasonable. I, I, they're options that we considered in our own uh, caucus, some of them, and we went one route, they won't go the other route, that's fine. But uh, we will have done our work and we would hope that that would be an incentive for the Senate to move quickly because Senator McConnell, Leader McConnell asked me to work with Secretary Mnuchin, we are. He had his concerns. We're addressing them. I don't. I hope they don't move the goalpost. Yes, sir. Yes, good morning. So, to be clear, so you think you can work this bill out today and pass that with potential changes? Mm -hmm. And then the idea is that the House might go away. Well, we did, we, we, we did one step at a time. I'm not saying anything here. We, we, we are here to pass a bill. When we pass a bill, we'll make a judgment about what comes in next. Uh, and we'll see the manner in which the bill is passed. So I'm not giving well, any travel things, arrangements. I know no, you were busy about your weekend and that, but that's not what we're about. Legislatively, though, what are those other things that you see? Obviously, these are things you can do immediately, but what are those broader things that you might see doing in a couple of weeks? Let us get this bill passed first, and then we see where we go from there. Because the fact is, it's like the house is on fire. People are concerned about their, of course, their health and the health of their children. 
Uh, if they are losing their jobs because nobody's coming to the restaurant or whatever it is, uh, then uh, we have to be there with some help for them. And if their children can't go to school because the school closed, they, how, how do they afford uh, child care? Well, this legislation affords them the opportunity to stay home on a, a somewhat of a paid leave for a while. So again, this is, we're addressing the realities of life, of family life in America, putting families first. We're not planning a schedule or anything else until we get that, until we get that done. And again, uh, we had in our bill last week the provisions for the Small Business Administration uh, to provide loans to businesses that were under duress, whether they lost their market overseas or their supply chain overseas, whatever it happened to be. And so that we thought was an important initiative to have in the bill. Uh, they may want to do more. That's something we can talk about. But even if you have your small business loan so that you can pay the rent on your store or your restaurant or your facility, if you don't have customers, you still have a problem. That's why when we do the uh, TANF, the, the uh, not TANF, the SNAP, the food stamps, when we do the unemployment insurance, when we do paid sick days, when we pay, have paid family leave, uh, a parental leave, family leave, uh, that, that money will be spent immediately, injects demand into the economy, creates jobs, is a stimulus. So this is not without its uh, opportunity to stimulate the economy. In fact, when we did the American Reinvestment and Recovery Act, uh, we, we asked the, uh, the uh, uh, Rosa DeLore in particular, asked the uh, uh, economist, name some of the things that we could do immediately that would be stimulus to the economy. Raise the minimum wage, we're not doing that here. But unemployment insurance, paid leave, uh, food stamps, et cetera. Because again, they go to people who have the need. They also have a earned income tax credit, uh, refundable and that, and maybe some things that we'll talk about in the future. Yes, sir. One of the issues that the minority leader is talking about has to do with, um, he believes that compromise could take place within the next 24 to 48 hours. But if it doesn't, the Republicans are willing to stay and work this out. What is the question I've taken out? The, the, the families have needs that I just described. Uh, we've made the proposal, which we started on Sunday and put out there. Uh, we're listening to governors, mayors, uh, nonprofit organizations, uh, educators, and the rest. This is what families need. They made suggestions to the language. We're making um, uh, agreeing to most of it because they're not they're not that different. So we don't need 48 hours. We need to just make a decision to help families right now but because we have to operate made. not as business as usual but in an emergency status where we have to get the job done. But if the decision isn't made, yes, will you Nancy. stick around? It, 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 I'm not sticking around because they don't want to agree to language. We're, we're, we have, we're agreeing to much of what they have to present. Look, first of all, Mitch McConnell called me and said, you work with, with um, the secretary, that's it. Now the House Republicans are saying they're not in the loop. No, we sent them the language. It's not about that. I mean, it, it's about putting people and families first. So, I mean, everybody could have a complaint about this or that. I said, save it for another day. We can have an after-action review about how we got into this situation. Save it for another day. Right now, we have to find our common ground, work together to, um, uh, to get this done as soon as possible, because we have other needs. We will have to address this issue further. And it's some things that they might want in this bill that aren't there. There could be another bill shortly down the road. We didn't do everything last week with $8.3 billion, but we did a great deal. And now we're doing more, and then we're fully prepared to do more. So we are have, we, uh, we're responding to their concerns. We don't want them moving the goalpost, and that's it. Yes, Nancy. Was it a wise move to block most travelers in Europe from coming to the U.S. for the next month? And if so, was it wise to leave the U.K. off of that list? Uh, I had a conversation with the Vice President and uh, Dr. Fauci last night when they called to inform me of this. The, Dr. Fauci said it was a 
scientific medical decision. Uh, I have a great confidence in Dr. Fauci. It's just strange because they're saying it's because it's easy to travel among these countries, but they're separate from the UK. Well, you, you can just get in the channel and you'll be in the UK. So again, it's a decision they made. Uh, it, it's, it has its ramifications. We'll see what the, whether it's worth the trouble. But again, I'm here about what we can do to go forward for America's working family, for putting families first without having a criticism of one of the other things that the president is doing. I do think, as Chuck and I, Leader Schumer and I said in our comments uh, last night, testing, testing, testing. That's the only way you're going to learn about the epidemiology, how this is spread. I don't want to use that word because not everybody knows what it means. Yes, sir. Last uh, question. Yeah. Um, yeah, we have the tea shop coming, so I have to get going. You said earlier this week that Congress is the last line of defense beyond the recess. Wondering um, if it came to it, how prepared. I said it was the last line of defense. I, I, I heard you say that at some point. I, I, I'm, I'm wondering if. Um, a line of defense. I don't know if it's the last. Anyway. Just wondering how prepared um, Congress is to work from home, potentially, if it were yeah. to come to that. We have been briefed by uh, uh, the chief administrative officer, by the. Uh, Chief of Police, by the Sergeant at Arms, by the uh, Capitol attending physician, by the uh, by our leader on the House Administration Committee, uh, Zoe Lofgren, about uh, what preparations have been made for remote remote work, uh, and that is something that we're actually encouraging people to be prepared for. You know, they may choose to to be coming in, but be prepared to do that. It isn't a, a, a requirement yet, but it is that we want people to be prepared. So we're providing the technology, the training, and all the rest to make sure that everybody is up to par on that. Uh, so, so our writing of legislation, our exchange of ideas, and all that won't stop the work of Congress, because by the time we come to the floor, it's the tip of the iceberg. There's so much else work that is going on. Uh, and that, and that, with their, all the respect in the world uh, for our staff who do much of that and our members who participate in that, everybody is not universally at the same, excellent at the same place in terms of technology. We want to make sure they're all at the, their personal best where that, when that sets in. So it's about, I hope that much of what we're doing is redundant and that we don't have to engage in some of this. But if we do, uh, we want to be prepared. Uh, we want to prevent uh, the spread. So if people have to stay home, they have to stay home. But we also don't want people to panic. So that's why we've based any decisions about the capital, this or that, on what is recommended uh, by the capital physician and the <coughs> sergeant in arms and the chief, uh, the chief of police. But it is, a, a, I think we have to be very prayerful about this. People are sick and some people are dying in our country and globally. And it is um, kind of shocking to see uh, the uh, challenges that we have and the decisions that have to be made about people coming together, whether it's sports or the arts or just political gatherings or whatever it is, we have to think in a different way about that, whether it's about personal hygiene or personal contact with other people, we have to be smart about how we do that. Washing our hands for 20 seconds with soap and water. Uh, I say that all the time anyway as a mom. But so and now, it's in, now it's an imperative, but it's always been important. So again, as, as I say, what, what we think about one policy or another, as Nancy asked, what we really have to do is come together and get the job done. Now, we, have, we were very clear in our communications uh, about what we heard. And when members go home, they will hear more from their constituents, from their uh, nonprofits, from their local government, from their health care providers and the rest, about what other ideas um, have uh, emerged as important in all of this. And that will be um, a source of, of knowledge for when we come back, and we could come back any time. Everybody has to stand ready 
to be here at all times if we have uh, a legislative solution to put forth. Uh, but again, it can't just spring from what we did before, anything like that. It's about what's current uh, and the challenge that we face with this um, with this uh, coronavirus. And it, it's not about spending a lot of time saying how we got here. We have to talk about where we go from here. And then we can make changes for the future and how we could uh, uh, prevent or withstand uh, whatever might be happening in other countries that might spread uh, to our own. But I do want to salute our health care providers, our first responders, all of the nonprofits that are working to uh, inform people about how they should be tested. Uh, we are in our legislation, we enable millions of masks to go out. That was something very important to the administration. Uh, that we would suspend immunity for liability was a very big deal, a big concession uh, to the administration on that because weighing the equities, it would be important to get those masks out uh, even though uh, it provided that immunity. So we, we have tried to say, okay, we have our, uh, and it's just specifically for the corona, for the corona uh, virus uh, crisis. So anyway, I thank you for your interest in all of this. I, I want you to wash your hands for 20 seconds. Not just all the time, just for no reason at all. Thank you. Thank you. World Health Organization now has officially, officially declared COVID-19 a pandemic. Downplaying it, being overly dismissive, or spreading misinformation is only going to hurt us and further advantage the spread of the disease. But neither should we panic or fall back on xenophobia. Labeling COVID-19 a foreign virus does not displace accountability for the misjudgments that have been taken thus far by the Trump administration. Banning all travel from Europe or any other part of the world may slow it, but as we've seen, it will not stop it. And travel restrictions based on favoritism and politics rather than risk will be counterproductive. Protecting the health and safety of the American people is the most important job of any president. And unfortunately, this virus laid bare the severe shortcomings of the current administration. Public fears are being compounded by pervasive lack of trust in this president, fueled by adversarial relationships with the truth that he continues to have. Our government's ability to respond effectively has been undermined by hollowing out our agencies and disparagement of science. And our ability to drive a global response is dramatically, dramatically undercut by the damage Trump has done to our credibility and our relationships around the world. The administration's failure on testing is colossal. And it's a failure of planning, leadership, and execution. The White House should measure and report each day, each and every day, how many tests have been ordered, how many tests have been completed, and how many have tested positive. Tests should be available to all who need them. And the government, the government should stop at nothing to make that happen. We need to accelerate the development and treatment of a vaccine. Science takes time. And it will still be many months before we have a vaccine that can be proven safe for public use and produced in sufficient quantities to make a difference. But therapeutics can and should come sooner. This will save lives. And when, and when a vaccine is ready to go, it should also be made widely available and, again, free of charge. We should also immediately restore the White House NASA Security Council Directorate for Global Health Security and Biodefense with a full-time dedicated coordinator to oversee our, that response. Our administration, our last administration, we created that office to better respond to future global threats after the Ebola crisis of 2014. It was designed for exactly this scenario. But for some reason, I still don't understand, President Trump eliminated that, eliminated that office two years ago. Congress gave this administration $8 billion last week to fight the virus. We need to know exactly what that money is going to be used for. 
how quickly it's going out the door and exactly how it's being spent. But by cutting our investment in global health, this administration has left us woefully unprepared for the exact crisis we now face. No president can promise to prevent future outbreaks. But I can promise you this. When I'm president, we will be better prepared, respond better, and recover better. We'll lead with science. We'll listen to the experts. We'll heed their advice. And we'll build American leadership and rebuild it to rally the world to meet a global threat that we're unlikely to face again. You know, and I'll always tell you the truth. This is the responsibility of a president. That's what is owed the American people. And we have to move and move now. Thank you all for taking the time to be here, and God bless our troops. Are you working on your health, sir? Have you been tested, or would you like to be tested before our Let me begin by reiterating what I have said from day one of this campaign, and that is that Donald Trump is the most dangerous president in the modern history of our country, and he must be defeated. Tragically, we have a president today who is a pathological liar and who is running a corrupt administration. He clearly does not understand the Constitution of the United States and thinks that he is a president who is above the law. In my view, he is a racist, a sexist, a homophobe, a xenophobe, and a religious bigot. And he must be defeated, and I will do everything in my power to make that happen. While we are currently losing the delegate count, approximately 800 delegates for Joe Biden and 660 for us, we are strongly winning in two enormously important areas which will determine the future of our country. The American people know, unlike Donald Trump, that climate change is an existential threat to our country and the planet, and that we need to transform our energy system away from fossil fuel to energy efficiency and sustainable energy. And the American people also know that we need fundamental transformation of a broken and racist criminal justice system, as well as a cruel immigration system that keeps millions of people living in fear. While Joe Biden continues to do very well with older Americans, especially those people over 65, our campaign continues to win the vast majority of the votes of younger people. Today, I say to the Democratic establishment, in order to win in the future, you need to win the voters who represent the future of our country, and you must speak to the issues of concern to them. While our campaign has won the ideological debate, we are losing the debate over electability. I very much look forward to the debate in Arizona with my friend Joe Biden. So let me conclude the way I began. Donald Trump must be defeated, and I will do everything in my power to make that happen. Thank you all very much. He's fighting for the future of this country. We don't have the time. Scientists say we do not have the time for status quo, for calm. That means people can't, you know, maybe people want to sit at brunch and enjoy their mimosas, no, 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 but the reality no, no. is there's children in cages at the border. No, I, I...